right, so I have a big surprise for all my viewers. The talented and amazing Kelly Vint Castro, the original Catherine Langford from the original 1994 Stargate movie and the American agent at the end of Stargate Origins. Hello, Kelly. Hi, Ryan. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. I thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. So I'm sure there's uh, lots of people. We got lots of questions, but a few months ago I posted some uh, inquiry on Facebook of people. We got a small list of questions from some people that uh, had some questions for you. And then we can maybe talk about your life and what's going on and how uh, Stargate has affected you as as it has many other people. Um, so why don't you tell us a little background first about your life and well, it would have been 1993 when you filmed the movie, you were um, 11 years old, if I'm correct. And uh, how did you come to be the young Catherine Langford? Yes, thank you for asking that. So um, I was 11, it was 1993 and I had grown up in Los Angeles, you know, I come from a family that was connected to the entertainment industry. And so it was just what we did. I was nine months old shooting my first commercial and um, growing up, you know, naturally my career was evolving. And so by the time I was 11, I was really fortunate to be able to go up for these really huge movies. Now at the time, I really didn't understand what that meant. I was young. And so when I auditioned for Stargate, and even doing Stargate, I, I did not understand the depth of how much this film and then continuing on the enterprise would impact so many people. Um, so, you know, as far as, as doing the shoot and, and being on the audition, at that time, it just seemed like, oh, well, this is what I do. I go to the audition and, and then I booked the job and it was really exciting. It was powerful to be on the set. I had never been on such an elaborate set in my whole life. I mean, just so many people from the costumes and the extras and, you know, carving out the side of a mountain. We were in Yuma, Arizona. And even when I look and I watch the film today, I go, oh my God, it really looks like we were in Egypt. I mean, the set was incredible. Oh yeah, and that was definitely quite a undertaking for, yeah. for everybody. I can, you know, and I've been on a few movie sets myself and fortunate to, be involved with some of those larger productions and it's it's amazing i mean just the movie magic in itself you know whether it's a fake concrete wall and you walk up and 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 touch it or you know it's just seeing windows with plants outside and you walk around the wall and it's just plants and potters with fans blowing on them and some lighting you know is it so that that movie magic can kind of get ruined for you real quick but <laughs> Being on a real set, I mean, that must have been fantastic. And I think that's probably one of the, well, for that time frame, that would have been quite the undertaking with all the extras and stuff as well. It was really extraordinary, to say the least. So it was, it was amazing to be a part of something so phenomenal. Do you remember much about the interview process as far as your audition and you know, I have this vague memory of coming in, you know, because how it goes is you go in and you connect with the casting director first, and then you'll go on a callback. And sometimes they have a series of callbacks depending on how big the job or how they want to do it. And then in the callback, you're reading for more people or you're interviewing for more people. And so, you know, I think about now, just it can be intimidating to walk into a room full of people who are you know, serious and in their suits or, you know, they're, they're the business side of it. Right. And so I just think about myself as this 11 year old kid walking into a room full of, you know, serious producers and <laughs> uh, right? like how intimidating that could be. And maybe I just wasn't even thinking about it at the time, but I remember Roland. So um, I remember just feeling his energy. We really connected. There was something that he just, for whatever reason, saw that I was the person. And there was just that energetic connection from the beginning. 
And yeah, so I, I, I think surprised. a lot of time people in those positions and stuff, they have something kind of in their head. And when they see right. it, they just know. And I mean, didn't you almost get run over by a camel one time and he freaked yeah. out or something? <laughs> I did. We were, it was like around the, you know, the, the actual Stargate when I'm running down the um, bridges and all that. And we stop initially, right. And there's just that huge Stargate platform. And then there's the big Stargate ring. So I was <laughs> standing on the ledge or just by the side of it. And the camel literally started chasing me. I was running around that thing and then jumped up on top of it. Was it the cover stones? Yes. <laughs> it was the cover stones. They're like, no, no, get off the stones. <laughs> but he was so sweet. He was really concerned about me and not so much the stones. But the prop masters probably were worried about the stones. <laughs> <laughs> did you have something in your did you have food in your pocket or something or Not that I remember I don't know maybe they thought I was food <laughs> well I know you recently uh went to Egypt and we'll have to talk about that I want to get through these questions first but cool. maybe I didn't know if there was any more camel stories <laughs> you know we got to see camels this time but I didn't get chased by any <laughs> oh that's good that's good uh so Anthony asked what does she think of the way in which SG-1 and Atlantis expanded the original concept of the Stargate movie, and what does she think Origins will add this story as a whole in the future? I mean, mm. these questions were obviously from months ago before all Origins was out. But, uh, yeah, what's what's your take on the, uh, basically, the spinoff shows and then your... Yeah. Question? So, Anthony, thank you for your question. And... You know, I was talking to Ryan a little bit about this yesterday of feeling this sense of not wanting to let down the Stargate community, because what I didn't realize after being 11 years old and being in that film, I didn't realize the magnitude really of what that was going to create in people and how it was going to move people and how it would move beyond that into you know, shows and, and all of that and just this dedication. And the truth is that I really didn't find that out until I was doing Origins. I didn't know how huge this community and the fan base truly is. Um, and so I don't have, you know, I'm embarrassed to say it, but I really don't know a lot about SG-1 and Atlantis and now knowing how Origins is really going to back up, you know, those shows that, that came out after the film. Um, I will say that I am more interested in it now than I ever have been before, just because of my own experience of connecting to ideas of Atlantis or Stargates and the reality of those things. And so... I am committed to watching them, exploring them, and honoring the thing that I got to be a part of. So please don't uh, crucify me for not being... Well, I mean, you were 11. <laughs> I mean, you were 11 years old. You got a little bit of a pass there. That was something you did as a kid and, you know, kind of just went on to do your own thing. And you got married and had three beautiful children. And I know one of your videos you talked about you know kind of the laws of attraction and how things come mm -hmm. back and you know my wife and i met because of stargate so i mean what oh yeah that's a crazy long story we'll have to talk about another time that's but. amazing see this is the stuff that like, who knew you know it's, that's so beautiful yeah i mean just real quick i was at dragon con i met another guy he had the same last name as me we joked around we were cousins I mean, this was back, you know, basically like in 05 when I told you I first got into the costuming. And uh, Zach and I became friends, and that's back when, like, MySpace was big. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was on his page one day, and he was in his uh, top 10, 20 friends, whatever they had back then. And she had this crazy Star Wars costume on. So I sent Zach a message. I was like, hey, who's the hot chick in the purple hair? And <laughs> like, oh, that's Katie. You should talk to her. And so I sent her a message. She totally blew me off. <laughs> and uh, there was just nothing. And then Zach had sent a message to her or something. He goes, hey, my buddy Ryan uh, might be sending you a message. So I guess she kind of gave me a double take after that. And we started talking and 
things went on from there. But wow, well, congratulations to you. Oh, guys. thanks. Uh, Sam. Sam is a really. I got to tell you about Sam real quick. This kid got a hold of me. For, it's been a good year. Um, young kid. I mean, he's early teens. I mean, this kid's still, you know, like high school. <laughs> and uh, I think he's like a freshman in high school. But he got home a year ago and he gotten online, done his research, found me and was like, hey, Ryan, I really want to do a SG1 costume, you know. And, and this kid didn't have a lot of money, obviously, you know. And uh, so I said, well, you're underage, so I need to talk to your parents, you know, and kind of make sure everything's cool and you're going to be sending me hundreds of dollars for stuff. So um, I called and talked to his mom and uh, she's like, yep, he's been saving his money and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay. And uh, he saved up and I hooked him up with little extras and stuff. And then he came back and he bought a flight suit. Um, It was a little too big. So he sent it back to me. We had some uh, he kind of jumped the gun on the size thing and I should have looked at it a little closer, but I, I was really busy at the time and just took him for what he ordered. And, uh, but we're getting that all fixed and worked out, but he got a really cool battle flight suit that I'm finishing up and kind of created his own character. He selected major as a rank, which I thought was really cool because, you know, he wasn't trying to elevate himself. He's starting out, he knows he's young and, you know, this, but this kid is just, I mean, he just blew me away because one, he's so young and two, he's, you know, he's so involved with the, the franchise. I mean, this stuff's been off the air for 10 years and he's, he loves it. But, um, Sam had a question for you. How did you react when you found out you would be playing the role of the young Catherine Langford? Again, you were 11 and how much do you really take in at that age? But I mean, that must've been pretty exciting even as an 11 year old. Absolutely exciting, you know, and because my parents knew that it was big, right? So I may have not really had the concept just because of how young I was, but I could feel there like, oh my God, you know, she she got this role. And so I understood that it, it was a big deal. And, but again, I didn't understand until I really showed up on the set and I just understood how huge it was and how important it was. Now, I didn't know what it would become, but there was something in me that just felt like, wow, this is really important. This is a big deal. And so I felt really grateful. I felt really excited uh, because of the connection that Roland and I had. I was not shocked because it really felt right. And it still feels right. I mean, it really feels like I was meant to do that film and how it came back later, the full circle, and now me going to Egypt and just these deeper connections to what it really means. Um, so it's just really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I remember when I did Green Lantern and that was only my second movie. Uh, I was lucky enough to be involved with Apollo 13 when I was in the Navy and kind of got the bug, but that was like, literally a year after Stargate come out. I mean, you were like 12. I was on my second tour in the Navy. I was in my early twenties. Um, you know, and I saw part of the production was involved, you know, some of my buddies from the squadron actually got in the film and, you know, that was cool, but we only spent a few weeks helping uh, Ron Howard and, you know, it was, we were in San Diego and they, took some of them up to LA. I helped find some props for the movie and I'm, no way did I ever imagine that, you know, flash forward from 1995 all the way to 2010 that I would again be on a movie set and working on props again, you know, and I was fortunate enough to, uh, one of the most brilliant prop masters in Hollywood walked into my shop one day and here's my MMCO going, yeah, he's, retiring in six months and he's one of the best PRs in the Navy, whatever you need, he can help you out. Mm -hmm. And then I, you know, they were all cloak and dagger about everything. And Mm -hmm. they were like, well, we're working on a project. And so I started spinning them with, you know, big words and everything. And they were like, well, can we get your information? And then they finally told me what they were doing. I was like, Oh, I love movies, you know? And I had a picture of my wife and I up on my bulletin board at, above my desk and we were in our stargate costumes so i showed it to prop master and he's like and he was giving me a hard time he's like you're not one of those guys that dresses up like stormtroopers and runs around all weekend and 
I was like, well, uh, <laughs> you know. not yeah. every weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so he was laughing. He goes, yeah, I got a really good friend that does that. I gave him a hard time all the time, but, um, you know, and they walked out and the guys that worked for me, they're like, Oh, Pier one, that would be amazing. You know, that's right up your alley. And I was like, yeah, I'm never going to hear from those guys. And two hours later, boom, my outlook goes off and I get an email, you know, and this was on, I think this was on a Tuesday. And then, cause we had PT that morning. Cause I walked in, these guys were in my shop and, you know, we used to call it like a dog and pony show. It was basically, you know, some pilots, brothers, wife's cousins, aunts, nieces <laughs> had come in and they wanted to, you know, put on a helmet or something. And that's what I thought it was when I first walked in. I had no idea that this was, you know, the talented group of individuals I was going to have the you know, opportunity to work with. And they were, they were just amazing. And, you know, once I got on set and I got, you know, I, I got pretty close to Ryan Reynolds and Blake, you know, and I, I got to spend time with them and hang out with them in their trailers and, and building, you know, it got to the point Ryan Reynolds was playing practical jokes on me and it was stuff I didn't figure out for like a year later till the movie came out. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, dude, come on. <laughs> but yeah, it's, I mean, until you've done it, it's really hard to explain to people just yeah. that, that movie magic. And, you know, I had an opportunity to help direct a scene um, for Ryan. It was the ejection sequence. And I'm sitting right next to Martin Campbell, the director. And he's looking at me, asking me questions. I'm freaking out. I'm, you know, I'm like oh, sitting in this good. chair. I'm just shaking. I, I mean, bet. I was just absolutely freaked out. And Ryan had a, bad take it was the first one you know the first one never is gonna be that great normally and so we walked over and martin gave him a little pep talk and ryan and i had talked earlier because he had had a skydiving mishap and at that point wow. uh, we had kind of bonded over that because i was a parachute rigger and he was like oh yeah i'm never doing that again i was laughing and you know, and I was like, this is great. I, you know, I get to go to your work, you get to come to mine. And we took them to the base and put them in the simulator and taught them how to be pilots. And it, it was just, it was a fantastic, you know, point in my life. It was amazing. Mm. And just to be able to have that opportunity, but Martin sitting there in the chair asking me questions, like, how do I direct this scene? And I'm like, well, looking at my boss, like freaking out, like, why mm. is this guy even talking to me? And, and, but Martin was great. And so Ryan's sitting there and I'm, I, Martin got done with these pep talk. And as Martin walked away, I looked at Ryan. I just said one word. I said, skydiving. And he goes, yeah, 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 I got it. And he knew because we had talked about that. And I told him, you know, the ejection sequence, you punched out of this plane. I said, you're freaked out, but your training is going to kick in. And, you know, and he's ripping his mask off and he's, you know, we got in front of the blue screen and he's, <gasps> and he looks like a fool. Yeah. But, I mean, he looks like a complete idiot, but I'm sitting there and I'm watching him over the monitor. And then when I look down and look at the monitor and you know, you got the box and everything and I'm looking right. and I'm like, and I look back over and he looks like an idiot. And then I look in the box and it looks perfect. Then I'm like, right. And it just hit me. I'm like, this is it. Right. Because on camera, it looks totally different. Totally different. <laughs> and people, I mean, it's just, and it hit me then. It just absolutely hit me. But we got done. And so we walked back over and Martin was like, thank you. He thanked me. He thanked Ryan. He's like, I'll see, you know, and they ring the bell and everybody's ripping stuff apart and running all over. And it was so cool because I knew that second take when Ryan did it because we ended the take and Martin looks at me and he goes, how was that? I said, that was a thousand times better. And we only did it six times. And I knew that second take after the pep talk, that was it. That was the one that was going to be in the movie. And it was, it ended up being the one in the movie. And, right. but Ryan put his arm or his hand on my shoulder and he goes, thanks man. I needed that. Yeah. And he walked off and my boss walked over and he kind of hit me on the back. He goes, well, you just directed your first Hollywood scene. And I was just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was like shaking. I was like, Oh my God. You know, and I know we've been on set like a month or two. It was like, 
it was crazy, you know, and I, I felt like all the crew were looking at me like, who is this guy? You know, he, <laughs> and I was just, I was walking around afraid I was going to step on a cord or kick something. And it was just, it was just my what an amazing experience. Oh, it was, it was just, so I can totally relate to, you know, and, and I'm sure, you know, and being that young too, to try to take all that in, that would just be crazy. Um, okay. Christina Lashy, she said, you could ask her if she watched any of the Stargate shows or anything else in the sci-fi genre. That's usually the first thing I want to know about people in general. Well, as you've confessed, you haven't watched a whole lot of the original series, but we're going to give you a pass on that. And I'm going to check up here. Uh, and be <laughs> to you and see follow up. Christina, <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> but maybe, you know, we can change that a little bit. What, what sci-fi shows, you know, maybe have, I know you don't watch a lot of TV. You told me that, but right. you know, is there anything that you've really connected with outside of the Stargate genre? Maybe. So, um, I, you know, this might sound really cliche or, or whatever it might sound, but so Star Wars, of course, you know, I love Star Wars and I love it because of the, the message of, of Star Wars. It's like, um, anything that, that I feel like, is in the world of sci-fi really is some version of sci reality, you know, and we kind of present it in this way of science fiction. So even the Stargate is what I'm really starting to connect to is the reality of that there actually really are Stargates that connect us to other dimensions and all that, which is really amazing. And so I think the one that I'd be the most connected to would be Star Wars because of that battle between the light and the dark and um, just what that represents in terms of us in our human condition and what we're still up against on this planet. Um, so that would be the one that, that would speak to me the most. And I do not have a deep, deep, deep connection to a lot of sci-fi. So that's just, that's just the truth. Well, and I, I know you and your husband have like this uh, partnership coaching thing that you guys do, which I think is phenomenal. Um, so I guess, you know, those are the things that really kind of hit home for you is those messages that yes. uh, some of these movies or series convey and, and are able to, you know, not only, expand our our fantasy but bring reality and passion and and i and i think that's what stargate uh i think that's what the falling with the Stargate because it was so real i mean i have heard you know people like amanda tapping and richard dean anderson talk about you know people and fans that have come up to them and oh you changed my life i went in the military because of you or i became a scientist because of you or i became a csi or i mean there's so stargate changed so many people's lives it, it's and i still i still can't get over the fact that it never went full mainstream you know like it it has such a huge following but it never got to that level of star trek or you know, Star Wars or X Files or you know, it just and I I I think I have to blame it on the fact that it was on Showtime for the first five years. Mm. And you know, with them going with a basically back then, you know, it was a pay per view type right, plat right, right. platform, which is crazy because that's what we're getting back to now, um, with the streaming that a lot of people are not happy about. But I think it just, it just never really broke out. And, it, and it's sad, you know, and I wish even like Continuum and the straight to DVD movies, I, I just feel if they could have got them to the theaters, which I know money wise, that's like ridiculous. But if they could have found the budget to got them to, you know, in the theaters and maybe got a few more people in it because People I find that have never watched it, once they do watch, they're like, oh, wow, I never realized how great the show was, you know, and it's, and I think that's with like Sam, you know, this kid's, you know, he was, he's just a couple years older than you were when you appeared in the movie wow. and he's finding this, you know, as a, as a passion and part of his life. And he's, you know, I mean, how much money does a kid have at, you know, 13, 14, 15 years old? 
and he's saving up and spending his money and going to these conventions. He lives out, you know, in like Oregon. So he's going to con the Rose, I think it's Rose city comic con is what they call it. But, you know, to go out and do these things. Yeah. Lots of people go to cons or they go to, you know, comic con or whatever, but the, the true costumers. And I, I have a little bitterness with the word cosplay because to me, that's more of the anime stuff, but it has become such a, everyday label that it kind of crossed over i mean me and you know lots of people that do the costuming you know basically professionally um we get a little heartburn with the with the cosplay thing but it's become a norm now to the point where there's so many people that are doing this mm and it's affecting their lives and you know they love doing it and these are new hobbies and whether it's gamers or anime or horror and i mean look at the walking dead and you know and i just you know we just lost scott wilson you know who played herschel and i met him and he was such a fantastic person and just the few minutes I got to spend with him and I was like, Hey, can I get a picture? And he was like, Oh, absolutely. You know, and he got up from the table and came around and put his arm around me. And he's like, you know, I feel really safe with you. And I was like, what? And so he's pointing at my Rick Grimes hat I was wearing. And, mm. you know, and we only talked for a few minutes, you know, the line was slow and he just, he loved the fans. He loved connecting with people. And it's just, you know, I, I love the shows and, and from a marketing concept, I think MGM needs to look at what The Walking Dead has done. I mean, mm. if they would have followed a model like that, oh, it would have been unstoppable, you know, but I just, you know, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. Um, <laughs> let's see, Reg said, I want to see more of her now at her current age. Well, Reg, watch Origins. <laughs> I am. <laughs> and where else can we see some of your other works? I know you've done a few things. I was looking at your IMDb and whatnot, but did you want to talk about any projects you've done recently? Or um, Sure. So, you know, I took a break at 17 from Hollywood with, I thought, a very certain commitment to not ever going back. Um, you know, the, the truth, and I'll just be really honest about a lot of why I don't have a connection to, you know, what happened and what transpired, you know, 10 years, you know, later with the shows and everything or 15 years later. Uh, you know, I did have one of those typical child actor stories where in my teenage years, it was rap parties and, you know, all, all these kinds of things. And so it became a really wild lifestyle. And it was wild and fun until it wasn't wild and fun anymore. And then it was really painful and there was a lot of suffering. And so um, that was until I was about 26. So for all of that time, I was sort of in this, you know, and this is maybe why Star Wars or any of those kinds of films would connect to me between the darkness and the light, because I have experienced that. And so there was a lot of drugs and a lot of just, um, you know, like I said, a lot of what happens when child actors go down that road, I feel really fortunate to have been given an opportunity to, um, you know, get sober first and then build a really extraordinary life that I love that is centered in light, in love, all those things. Um, and so the things that I'm doing now, you know, I, I ventured back into the Hollywood scene after a long time of not having been in it as a mom, as a wife, with my kids. And so it was really interesting to go back into these audition rooms, you know, because I remember going with my mom and my two sisters and my dad. We, there was a family of five. And we would go on family auditions together. And we never booked a job together once. I mean, it just never happened. One person might book it, or maybe two, but never the whole family. And... So going back with my family now as the mother and having three small kids, it was really something. It was, it was serendipitous and healing and powerful. And we were so fortunate because we got to work together as a family so many times. We did commercials, we did print jobs, 
And it was really, really fun to be able to go back um, in, in a different way, in a more conscious way. And so some of the stuff now that uh, we are working on is more related to conscious content. So recently we sold all of our stuff and actually didn't really sell it. We gave most of it away. And we moved out of our three bedroom house in Los Angeles into a 36 foot converted school bus. So we have everything that we need in this little tiny house on wheels. And so now what we're really creating is how do we document this sort of movement, right? This sort of um, series. So we're creating different things and I am excited and I'll keep you posted as to what's, you know, transpiring and, and where people can find that kind of stuff. So it's not necessarily related to Hollywood as we know it, but um, associated with the movement <laughs> in which we hope Hollywood will move, <laughs> like the direction. <laughs> well, I know there's been a lot of reality stuff. Like I was telling you uh, earlier, I had a friend in the Air Force. Um, well, she was a friend from high school, actually, but she went in the Air Force, and we didn't have any military connections, but we reconnected later, you know, through Instagram and Facebook and whatnot, and she lives a very healthy lifestyle. I mean, she you know, lifts weights, and I mean, this girl's got arms that would put some guys to shame, and uh, but she's also an interpreter, and she does sign language, and she's, she's very talented and amazing, but recently she ended up on HDTV because she bought a tiny house and then they took her around and did the three, you know, different models and she had her friend and, you know, she's trying to figure out what shoes to keep. And, uh, I saw one of your videos. I wasn't going <laughs> to drag you into that, but I was like, well, how do you go to 200 square feet? I couldn't do it. I mean, right? I, I, I mean, my, my shop alone is big is I need the room. I have like hundreds of tack vests, so I, mean, I couldn't do it, but I, I give you, I give you props. That's, um, and it, it, that's going to be such an amazing adventure from your kids. And I, you know, I saw a picture of them and they're all adorable. I mean, you. your, your daughter, I mean, I, I saw the picture of like the, the four of you in a, like a field, you know, it was like on yeah. your Facebook page and, um, but your daughter, I, I wanted to grab it, but I was like, no, that's creepy. But I wanted to grab the picture and put it side by side with you from the movie, you know, because she looks so much like you when you were that age. I know. And how old is she now? I mean, so this is the trippiest thing that you're going to hear about this whole thing. So my, we have a blended family. My husband had a daughter. Not your daughter. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so but I, I this is so because even and she is my daughter I mean I love her I don't even oh, see the separation between her and the boys that I've delivered I mean I just we're, we're all very close and very close to her mom as well and so it's really beautiful the way that we've created it but she looks more like me than any of them and you cannot believe how many people have said specifically oh my gosh Kelly that picture of you from Stargate looks exactly Just like her <laughs> and they will get goosebumps saying it because it's so bizarre. You know, she, she looks exactly like me during that time and she's nine now she's about to be 10. So and it's the same really age. close to that age. It's, it's crazy. And our kids, cause I had a son and he had a daughter. They're three days apart, literally. She was born, and then three days later, my son was born. We didn't know each other, right? So we didn't know what was going to be happening later. But they're like little soul twins. I mean, they look like each other. It's like they were always meant to be together. So, you know, some things we just, we can't always explain. But there's something else happening <laughs> that, that meets the eye. There's always a plan. There's always a plan. Well, my buddy Brian, he's a prop guy too. He said, would she be interested in returning to the franchise beyond Stargate Origins if there was a Force series? Is that something that you would even consider committing to? I mean, that would be such a huge commitment if, you know, I, I know in one of your videos you said, you know, I wanted to play a special agent or yeah. you know, <laughs> something like that. But I mean, I, I was like, wow, you know, I could see you, you know, being on like a future Stargate team or something. I mean, is that something that you think you could commit to or you just kind of have too much going on in your own personal life to 
really step that far back into Hollywood? I would say this. I would say if it lined up and it was clear that I was being guided to do it, I would 100% do it because as big as life can get, what I know is that when you commit to something, everything will line up to support it, right? So uh, it would be so fun to do it. And if it was, if it was right, absolutely, I would. That's awesome. Uh, let's see. Swan Wild. I'm trying to think who that was. Uh, is she a fan of the Stargate universe? No pun intended. Well, I think you've obviously expressed mm -hmm. uh, how much Stargate uh, is, how much Stargate you have a passion for and love. And obviously we're going to uh, quiz you later on. Yes. I'll be studying <laughs> all day, every day. No, um, <laughs> You know, I will say this, I'm, I'm a fan of the universe, right? And like the Stargate universe being a part of that. And just, you know, what, what I keep connecting to is just how big of an impact this has had. And that I got to be a part of that makes me a grateful, humble, very uh, honored fan of that Stargate universe. So, and yes, I'll be ready for my tests at a later time. <laughs> <laughs> well, and as I, uh, talked to you about before uh it wasn't a bribery thing but mark and i felt that uh you needed to have your your own yeah. raw pendant so i will be mailing you one of those uh i i'm blown away by that and so grateful i mean when you sent me that picture i just and you sent it right after i came home from egypt so it was there's just such a deep connection even more so and it's so beautiful oh my gosh i well i saw the turquoise one, one for everyone i know i mean <laughs> <laughs> well you guys had those big turquoise necklaces uh yeah. over in egypt and i saw those and i was like oh man i wish i would have gave her the raw pendant before she went to egypt right. i mean i'll wear it next time i go okay yeah because you <laughs> talked about going next year or something we'll have to talk yeah. about that because i when David Reed was over in Egypt, I mean, I, I had some serious jealousy con <laughs> feelings that were going on. And uh, I was like, man, I got to get over there. I mean, I, I got to put on my Stargate jacket and stand in front of a pyramid just once. I mean, that's, 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 you know, top five bucket list for me. So and and you can create it. So, right. This is the, the manifesting stuff is to look at someone and it's so hard right in this human condition to do this but it's mastery and it it works so powerfully if i look at someone and they created something that i wish that i had created instead of jealousy i'm like oh i'm inspired by that because if you can do it i can do it yeah and maybe who knows this whole thing is i'm supposed to you know go over with you guys sometime and go I mean, That's what I'm talking about, Ryan. <laughs> I don't know. Me, me having a picture with Kelly in front of a pyramid, that might be kind of cool. <laughs> <That's> right? <laughs> or some raw pendant. <laughs> That's right. I, I took a picture on my Instagram once. Uh, I had two or three of them around my neck, and I was like, <laughs> I was working on them. And they were the actual ones that ended up going to Origins. And oh, wow. Ended up being the, the stunt pendants for the, for the show that I sent out uh, for them to use. Um so Gwen, he's a guy over in France, huge Stargate fan. And I remember Gwen, he came onto the scene, whew, would have been about 07, I think. And he was super young. I remember he was underage. And we had a policy with um, Sci-Fi Hero that you had to be 18. And I believe he was, he had just turned 17, I believe. And I remember Dan and I had a conversation about it. And he was wanting to be a full member and everything. And we were like, ah, what do we do? Change the charter, you know, type. So we just made him an honorary member. And we used to get, I mean, in 07, things were moving along really good. I mean, Atlantis was just blowing up. I mean, you went to Dragon Con and there was just, I mean, Stargate fans everywhere. Mm -hmm. I, I went one time, uh, my wife and I went and I had about 30 of my prop headsets from Atlantis that I made and I carried them in my vest and I was selling them for like 20 bucks a pop and wow. I walked around and was just selling them literally out of my vest. We sat down for lunch um, on Saturday. So we'd been there basically almost, you know, two full days and I went to get money out for lunch and cause I was just, I was using my headset money to 
by, you know, autographs and photos and, you know, pay for stuff. And, and I turned to my wife and I said, do you realize we haven't spent a dime since I've been here? And she's like, what? I said, I just now dipping into our money because I was selling these headsets like crazy and you know, 20 bucks a pop. And back then I was able to sell them a little cheaper because the parts were cheaper and they ended up increasing the the part that I use that I get from a company by like 600%. So price like, well, I mean, you're talking about going from a couple bucks up to like $4 a piece. So it's, But in the grand scheme of things, when you sit down and you order, you know, 50 of them and they're mm. five bucks a piece, then, you know, that gets not very cost effective. <laughs> but it was just this kid came in and we used to call them shooting stars. We would get these people, to, they join the site and they're like, oh, I'm going to be a costumer and I'm going to do all this and that in six months. You don't hear from them anymore. So I told Dan, I said, well, he seems to be pretty passionate. Let's, uh, let's bring him in. And so we did. And we made him an honorary member for like a year till he turned 18. And then, but now he's over in France, he's making costumes from scratch and he has done amazing. I, I mean, I've sold him patches and helped him with, you know, vest mods and figuring stuff out and he doesn't have a ton of money. So he's doing the stuff himself, but now he's started his own channel and he's, you know, he's helped me. Oh, he's helped me for a decade um, because a lot of French customers don't speak English Mm. and I've made him kind of my, my translator. And I get these people that email from France and I love my French customers, but they can be, difficult to deal with um they will place huge orders and four days later send you an email asking you how things are going (laughs) and you're like dude it's gonna be six months before i even get close to having your you know they order all this stuff and (laughs) you know and i've ordered supplies and they they haven't even shipped from the manufacturers you know i'm like you know but he's been such a just a friend and so helpful because he's been able to translate and talk to these French customers and deal with them. And he's even told me, he's like, I hate the French. (laughs) He goes, we're a pain in the butt. And I was like, well, and and they are, they're a different, they're a different culture. And I've, I've learned a lot about how to deal with them and whatnot. But this, I mean, I have so much respect for this kid. He has been there for me and for other fans and the stuff that he has made has just been, he's made costumes. Nobody else has ever made. He's made a full uh, McKay costume and had the season four or five vest and done the backpack and all kinds of stuff. And he just, he's, he's done phenomenal costumes and I'm going to, I'm going to plug his, uh, channel down in the description below and awesome. and linky's facebook page and stuff but gwen had a question for you i'm rambling uh, what what's like what's it like returning to the franchise with origins after so many years i mean i know we kind of talked about that but i mean i know you and mercedes knew each other and then you got this phone call and then kind of figured it out so, so tell us a little bit about that You know, it just never ceases to blow my mind in terms of synchronicity and the way that things line up when we surrender and let go, right? We get so addicted to our plans and this has to be this way and this has to be this way and this is what I'm doing that when we get hooked into that, we miss all this magic that's available to us. And so, um, you know, when I look at the series of events that happened for me to even be reconnected, I had just decided to start doing some stuff in Hollywood again. We were doing commercial stuff with the family and then I was doing some short films and uh, a little bits and pieces on different things. And so I met Mercedes. I did a, a little spot in a short film for her and zero knowing that this would now come full circle with Stargate. We met, we loved each other. 
it was great. It was fun, really easy shoot. And she's so talented. She really is. She's a powerhouse. I mean, she's just brilliant. I love, love, love her spirit and her creativity. Yeah, I got, I got to meet her at San Diego Comic-Con two years ago uh, when yeah. MGM brought me out for the, the announcement mm-hmm. and the release. And I got to spend a little time with her, but I could tell she, she definitely was not only a fan, but just her passion for what she, the story that she wanted to tell, you know, and that's yeah. why I was so excited to, you know, I had hoped to get out there and, and help, but it didn't come to fruition, but we, uh, we definitely talked and we, we exchanged some few emails and I told her a few things that I was able to do for her and whatnot. And, but yeah, she's definitely an amazing person. Amazing person. And she's so sweet. You know, she, when I say powerhouse, it's not like in your face powerhouse. She's so gentle, so loving, but she's powerful. I mean, she's young and she is really moving up the right. I mean, ranks you know she's she's moving her career is moving i mean for her to be directing stargate origins that really says something about her because there's a lot of people that are trying to make it in hollywood and direct and produce and act and all those things and and so just something about the way that she is committed and her focus and her dedication is really having her stand out you know and she's just being being honored with these amazing projects. So when she, you know, we, we've had a uh, brief exchanges via social media or email. And so she sent me a message saying, I can't wait to tell you something. I can't tell you right now though. <laughs> I just thought, okay, <laughs> cool. I'll, I'll wait till I can, you can tell me. <laughs> and then she was at Comic-Con and they released it. And then she said, Kelly, okay, now I can tell you. I'm going to be directing the next Stargate show. And I thought, oh, that's why you were so excited to connect with me. And you couldn't tell me yet. But once she could, she asked if I would come back and do a cameo. And I just thought, wow, how amazing that I would meet this woman maybe a year before that she would do whatever she's doing to, you know, become, you know, someone who's in this position to direct the show. She would have a connection to to me, I would come back. I mean, it's just so mind blowing, really, and really neat. And so coming back was such an honor. And I said this, you know, in another interview, but it was really also very special, because that was one of the last times that I remember being really, really connected to my dad when I was filming Stargate, he took me to the shoot. And it was such a beautiful time with him. And so he's not, you know, he, he passed. And so coming back, it was like connecting to him too. And then to do the same exact shoot where I'm wearing the same glove with the same idea of a necklace, right? It wasn't yours, which is not (laughs) very (laughs) disappointing. Um, But I, you know, it was, it was just so strange because I never saw that coming. And, And so it felt like I was back on that set again, 11 years old. Well, honestly, when I, when I saw that scene and it was a brilliant Easter egg alone, but when I, I watched that scene a few times and just watching your acting and I could see how connected you were and the, and the passion that Mm -hmm. came through, it wasn't even acting. It was, I could see the connection there and, and that reminiscence or whatever you want to call it uh just in that that short scene as you're doing your lines and everything i was like that was a very impactful moment for her i mean it was it was just like when amanda did my reenlistment in the navy you know it was over Mm -hmm. and done with in a matter of minutes but you know that was a time in my life that you know i i remember so much detail and and just the the level of emotions i mean i was so nervous but she was nervous too you know, and Commander May was messing with her with his dry sense of humor. And, and I I did get to tell you, but he went up to her and he's like, so you got the oath all memorized, right? And she's like, I I, I don't know. And he's like, okay, no problem. I printed it out for you. He said, go ahead and memorize this real quick. And then uh, he's like, you're good at just rambling all that stuff off. So just memorize this real quick. And, um, and then we'll do it, you know, and it's the, it's the oath. It's, you know, I'll support, you know, 
defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. I mean, it's it's a mouthful. And m- traditionally, most officers memorize it because that's part of their duties is to re-enlist the enlisted people. But he hands her this thing, and she's reading it, and she is freaking out. I mean, oh she gosh. is freaking out. And, uh, and then he's like, I'm just kidding. You can read it. And she's like, oh, my God. And she was like, she, so everybody in the room was laughing. And it, was, it really broke the tension because her and I were both so like, and, but we got done, and I gave her the shadow box, and she literally, she just, I mean, she had tears welling up in her eyes. When we took the photos, you could see her eyes are all red and puffy. And, uh, you know, it wasn't full-on tear streaming, but we both got very emotional. And it was, you know, my friends told me later, they were like, that was one of the most powerful things I've ever witnessed. You know, it was, wow. there was such a connection there because I had such a love of Stargate. And, and in 2006, to be able to have the opportunity for her to do my ceremony you know and then commander may being you know the honorable man he was to i mean he had already left atlanta he went to new orleans and then he took his own flight up to british columbia got his own rental car paid for his own hotel i didn't have the money for it i'd spent thousands of dollars just to be able to go to the convention in vancouver between my flight i had to buy a passport and uh i just the flight and hotel, you know, people that go to cons, they know, I mean, you can blow a couple grand in a couple days. And, you know, I didn't have a whole lot of money at the time. I was just doing security work on the side and active duty military. And, you know, I had just gotten promoted. So I was making a little bit more money, but it, it was just, I mean, and plus I, I had the box made for, and we spent, I spent, you know, a ton of money on that, making sure it was perfect. But like I told you, you know, the guy that did the plaque, he was a Stargate fan and didn't charge me for the plaque. And Mm -hmm. I just, so many things fell into place, you know, and it was just, you know, we flew the flag over the base on Amanda's uh, daughter's birthday. And, you know, there was just so many special things about that. And then Mm -hmm. I don't see her for six years. I walk back into a con to do a photo op and she turns around and she's like, Oh my God, Ryan. And you know, she gives me a big hug. And the first thing out of her mouth, she goes, I still have your, your box thing on my wall in my office. Mm -hmm. And that meant so much to me because I know these people get given so much stuff. I mean, bears and toys and stuffed animals and cookies and stuff that, (laughs) you know, it's gotten to the point where, you know, like people like, Richard Dean Anderson, they've literally, you know, they've had their people put out, you know, no more gifts. We just can't, you know, and and it's not that they are ungrateful, but it's just, they don't understand how much stuff, but, you know, she told me, she goes, this is one of the most amazing things I've ever been given. And she goes, this is going to stay with me. And then six years later, she tells me it's still on her wall in her office. And that just, that meant so much to me. Mm. And uh, I wish I could crack it open and put some better patches. And because <laughs> things have kind of progressed since I made the box. But no, it's just, that was an amazing mo- moment for me. And, you know, and that ties in, Beth asks, you know, what does it feel like to have been with the original production and in, in the web series? That that's pretty rare. You know, and I think we've pretty much covered that, but it's just yeah. how, how many people get to come full circle. I mean, I'm sure there's been a few things with, you know, you look at even the new Predator movie, you know, one of the original cast members, now he's directing it and it didn't do so well so far, but you know, there's, there's those things that happen, but again, it's very rare. I mean, for yeah. you to be 11 and then come back and do a cameo. And Mercedes, you know, brilliant enough to give you that scene and write that into there where you got to, you know, put the gloves on again and, and run, right. run your thumb across. I mean, I watched both. I went back and watched both videos just to see how close it was. And it was, it was amazing. It was an amazing ending for me. Mm. I mean, there was two things that really got me was that. And then when she busted the bottom of the address off Mm -hmm. and then that tying back to why, you know, James Spader was like, I, I can't, 
I, <laughs> it's not here, you know, mm -hmm. and just, wow, you know, okay. Right. You know, it, it's worn off, <laughs> became a whole new thing, you know, so there was really some key moments and I know origins has, has gotten a lot of slack and I, I think it was mostly because of the platform of being a streaming service and the fact that they broke it up in the 10 episodes. It just, yeah. it was, you know, too many credits, too much spinning stuff. And it just, you know, but to watch it, what they need to do is, you know, and I know the DVD market's gone, but what they needed to do was put it, put it all together. Like, like they had. Um, so we, let's see what questions that I, I had to, uh, how did Stargate change your life and did it impact you? to want to be an actor or were you already a desire? So I guess you were already acting a little bit. How much had you done before the 94 movie? So I had done quite a bit. I was, you know, nine months old was my first commercial and I did oh, commercials wow. a lot throughout my whole childhood. And then I did um, TV series for two years on ABC and um, I did Space Jam, but I think that was after Stargate. So you know, I, I, I was really in, in that world. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> and then I just, I, I mean, we put these questions down months ago before your trip and I definitely want to talk a little more about that, but I actually put whose idea was it to use the lace gloves in the ending with your famous thumb sweep? I mean, was that Mercedes? You know, or, yeah. you know I, I would guess that it was Mercedes, but I'm not a hundred percent certain about that. But how powerful. And when you say that you could really see the connection in my face, it, it was not acting. I was deeply connected to that moment and very emotional and didn't even matter how many takes we did. I could feel it every single time. It was really beautiful. And when they told me they were going to do that, I was just in that moment. I got goosebumps everywhere. My eyes welled up. I mean, it was emotional. It was emotional to hear that I was going to do it. And it was emotional to actually do it. Yeah, I mean, that might have been Mark, you know, or one of the script writers, too. Yeah. I just, I I wish so much I could have been there and been more of a part of it. That was, I was, <laughs> I was like, I was, I would have slept on a cot and ate peanut butter sandwiches in the Ooh. corner. I, I wouldn't have cared. That was just, I, I think I could have really brought some things. And I had some early ideas, but the the thing that got me was that MGM didn't give them enough pre-production time that that's what really created some pitfalls for them is the uh, one, the budget and two, the pre-production time was too short and they prematurely announced, you know, and even the poster said 2017. And I knew when they did that in July, I'm like, ah, I, you know, they just, there was too many Indians and not enough chiefs. Uh, it just, it, that's what I felt from a production standpoint, you know, but I mean, for what they had, I think they did a really good job. And I really love that, you know, and there's a lot of people arguing about different things and your age and Ellie's age and stuff like that. But I mean, when you, when you try to jam all that stuff together, it's really difficult to stay, you know, in the timeline. I mean, Oh, there was one thing I wanted to add. What was it like writing in that model T? I mean, because that was, uh, I looked it up one time of what year that Model T was. I mean, because you got to ride in, in dad's car. <laughs> in, in the film? Yeah. Yeah. No, that was really cool. <laughs> I, mean, I felt like I was in 1928. <laughs> you know, I mean, I. I, I remember it like that, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> I can still feel it. It was really, really neat. Uh, and it, and it, it's, it's funny too, because I, I, I loved going back and watching that part and just really focusing on you after uh, we had talked and, you know, you agreed to do the interview and stuff and you're standing there where they were in the sun's in your eyes and you're kind of like, you know, <laughs> it was just, it was, it was so funny to go back and see it. But I was like, wow, she got to ride in the model T, you know, and you only had a few short scenes, but you know, it's, it's still amazing how much Stargate impacts people's lives. And, but before we wrap up, I want to, I w real quick wanted to talk about the Egypt stuff. So yeah. fill me in on that and plug anything you're wanting to talk about there. And you know. sure. 
how do we go to Egypt? <laughs> so one of, it's, it's again, one of these connections, right? And if we all start really paying attention, they're everywhere all the time. And when I got the call that I was going to come back to Stargate after 25 years of, you know, not being necessarily connected to it, I called one of my dearest friends, Beverly Elba. She's just amazing. One of my soul sisters and sort of just um, pioneers for transformation. And I said, listen, you're not going to believe what's happening. You know, I got this call. I'm going back to Stargate after all of this time. And she just kind of was silent for a moment and then said, Kelly, you are not going to believe this, but... <laughs> I literally just put together a trip to Egypt and I have your name at the top of my list of people who are supposed to be coming. Yeah. <laughs> and I got goosebumps everywhere and I knew that it was, it was part of it, that I was supposed to be actually going to Egypt, that it was just all connected. And so all of these connections and just noticing how, you know, like I said, they're there for all of us. So are we paying attention or not is another story. But I said, yes. So my husband and I went to Egypt. We literally just got back last week and I got to visit actual stargates. I mean, I literally got to sit and be on actual stargates and it doesn't look like the one in the movie, but you know, this is, there's a reason why these ideas are in existence. And so what I got to experience was the deep connection to ancient Egypt and the history and the wisdom of what is there and so much of it that we're not really even informed about or know about, or maybe it's even kept hidden for certain reasons. But I had very, very powerful experiences there being in the Great Pyramid, we were in there for two hours, just the five of us, our small group, wow. standing in front of the pyramids, going to these holy temples and sacred sites. And, you know, it's, it's something interesting that happens because you sort of get these downloads of information that have been here all the time, um, but it's, they're so deeply embedded in, in the earth there. And so, so powerful, so amazing. We are committed to bringing people back to Egypt. So we're uh, doing Stargate tours. That's uh, the next development. <laughs> and so you should come with us and other people are more than welcome to also, you know, check that out. Um, you can find me on social media, Kelly Vint Castro, and see all the things that we're creating and that we're up to, including trips to Egypt. And, you know, if it's something that has called you or, you know, I really do feel like it's that. I think it calls certain people to come at certain times. And so, you know, if that is you and you're being called, then you can find me and, and we'll see if we're supposed to go together and, um, and find the other things that we're doing, you know, the, the bus and, and the adventures and all of this wild living. And I will be also honoring my commitment to connect to Stargate, the franchise, and really learning more about why this has been such a movement and impacted so many people and made such a difference. Well, that'd be awesome. Maybe we can do a follow-up thing, you know, sure. a year from now or down the road when I know you're extremely busy and everything. And I, I, I appreciate you being so patient with me and getting our schedules to finally align. And, and you being patient with me too. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I think we originally talked in May <laughs> and it's October, but you know, I was looking up some trivia stuff the other day and I was like, Oh wow. The movie came out October 28th, 1994. So my plan is to get this all edited and everything and release it, you know, I usually release them pretty quick, but I'm going to hang on to this one. I'm going to release it today should be October 28th when I release this. So, and I know you said 28 plays a big Huge. role in your life. And absolutely. So my husband's birthday is May 28th. My son is February 28th daughter, April 28th. Um, grandmother, July 28th. My husband's sobriety day is March 28th. I, like 28ths are everywhere. So when you said it came out October 28th, I thought, of course it did. <laughs> of course it came out on the 28th of some month. <laughs> so I love that this is going to be released on the 28th too. <laughs> That's awesome. And I, you know, again, thank you so much for your time yeah, and, uh, thank you. doing this and we'll definitely, we'll talk over the next, 
you know, a couple of weeks and whatnot, whatever links you want me to put into the video, I can drop those down below. If, oh. um, if you want to plug your, your bus channel and <laughs> all that, you know, I'm, there might be some people that that really relates to and they want to, they oh. want to see more of your adventures, but you know, it's, I can tell what an amazing person you are. And I just, you know, it's, it's an honor to be able to talk to you and, and be a part of this and we connect and uh, share our stories and experiences on set. And uh, I just, I really thank you for your time. Absolutely. Thank you to Ryan and bless you and, and all that you're creating. And, and I really appreciate this connection and, and look forward to the, the update in a year <laughs> or, or less. <laughs> yeah. And let me know. I mean, I guess you don't really have a mailbox anymore. So I got to figure out how to send this pendant to you. <laughs> oh, right. I'll send you, I'll send you an address. You can send it to <laughs> send it to mom or somebody and uh, they can hang on to it for you until right. you, you swing by. But. That's right. All right. Well, you Thanks. have a great day and I will talk to you soon. Perfect. Sounds good. <laughs> Come. Stealing on accident is still stealing. Well, hopefully Kelly likes Cinema Sins, and I had an absolute blast with that interview. I want to thank Kelly for her time, and I want to thank everybody for watching. Please share, like, and subscribe, and we'll talk to you soon.